Hi everybody, Mitchell here from thehockeyrefbook.com. This video is going to be all about the procedures for lines, people, and the three official system. Now before we get started, just a reminder, everything that you learn about in this video and certainly complimentary to this video is the book, How to Referee Hockey. It's not just about the rule book. Uh, you can pick up a copy through the website, thehockeyrefbook.com. Uh, and certainly what's in the book is going to make more sense with these videos attached to them. When you take a look through these different slides that I'm going to show you in this video, you're going to notice that there's references to the book and certainly the page references in the slides are going to give you the direction of where to go in the book in order to get more information about the procedures that we're talking about in, in this slideshow. So, lines, persons, procedures, and the three official system. So, we're always going to be talking about the same skills, whether it's for referees or lines people or officials in the two official system. We're always talking about positioning, which is all about staying out of the way, seeing the play, being able to give you the opportunity to have success by being in the right position on the ice. We know procedures, which is what this video is about, and then game management, how you manage your emotions, how you manage the emotions of the game, how you prevent bad things from happening. That's all about game management. But in this video, we're going to be talking about those procedures, which really boil down to this. It's all about stop play, separate players, start play. And we can break that down further as we go along. Because as we go along, you're going to take the opportunity, if you so please, to imagine, close your eyes and imagine what these procedures might look like as we go through them. By doing that, by using your imagination, you're going to build neural connections in your brain, which is going to give you better muscle memory development and when you actually go on the ice to prov to implement procedures in a game so pause the video if you need to and actually try doing some 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 imagery uh, to help your brain understand what it is that you are learning uh, in these videos so procedures we really need to start with understanding what they are so stop play separate players start play and that's that's what it is every single stoppage whether you're looking at offside or an icing or a goal, that's what we're going to do. We're gonna stop play. When we stop play, the players are gonna stop playing, hopefully. When the players stop playing, or if they don't stop playing, we have to blow our whistle again. So we have to stop play a second time if we need to. But we're gonna get those players to stop playing, at which point we have to separate the players and get them to move on to the next thing, which is usually a line change or lining up for the next face off. Once we've separated the players, the referee and the three official system can do line change and the liners will also have a responsibility uh, during that time. The players are changing and then they're lining up for the next face-off and you have a responsibility as a lines person to manage that face-off. It's really your, bed, your, your bread and butter of what you do during a game. A lot of it is your face-off and that's where you're going to earn a lot of points with the players and help you with your game management techniques by understanding how you manage face-offs. So we can make that even a little bit more clean, bring it all together, and you have this idea right here, which is stop play, separate players, start play. That's what you're going to do every single stoppage. And then you just make small changes to uh, those procedures depending on what the situation demands of you. So we're going to start with a goal procedure. Okay. It's somewhere in here I need to start in the game. So I'm going to try to run through this in a kind of a storytelling type way to help you apply this to your own imagination and think about what it is that you would do if this was a real game. So we're going to try to do this kind of like a story. Again, right down here, in case you've forgotten, page 85 to 90, this is the reference to where you'll find the goal procedure for liners in the book, uh, How to Referee Hockey. Uh, the link for that, to, certainly to look at the excerpts, is in the description of this video, thehockeyrefbook.com. So, let's imagine that the puck is in the slot. Okay, The puck's in the slot, and it gets shot on net. First thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to stop play. This would be the referee's job, so the referee's going to finish at the net. They're going to blow their whistle, and they're going to point at the net. The two liners have a role here. So the liners are currently at the blue line. They have a role, their role is to come in in such a way that they get in between the players. You can see that the X players, the team that scored, they are close together celebrating their goal. L1 comes right down here and gets between this Z player in the slot and the, these X players because L1 wants to make sure that Z moves away from 
these X players. So you're getting between players. Stop play, the referee did that. Separate the players, that's what's going on now. And then we have to get ready to start play again. You'll also notice that L1 went deep and L2 stayed high. Generally what you're looking to do is, uh, if there's no pushing and shoving going on, a goal procedure or anything else, you can look at trying to separate yourselves out so that you create lots of presence between different players. So we've stopped play, we've gotten between the players, we've encouraged them to separate. They head to their bench. L2 is able to head up to the bench with them. L2 is going to be keeping these players separated at the bench because there's going to be another bench over here. So L2 continues to keep these players separated. L1 is able to stay with these players and make sure they head to their bench, like so. Zed's now went to the bench, we're still separating players. Once they're there, L1 kicked the puck to center ice. And we're now setting up for that next face-off. In this case, the referee is going to come to center ice, retrieve the puck from L1, which allows L1 to move over here. You see that L1 doesn't go immediately to their blue line, but this they're continuing to keep players separate. Because what will happen is that as those players line up right here, L1 is able to stay here and just help create presence. Once the players are lined up, L1 would then take up their position at the line, as would L2 for that next face-off. Now the line change procedure, of course, is five seconds for the visitors, five seconds for the home team, five seconds for puck drop. We're gonna go through this, uh, this for the end zone face-off and the liners running the face-off. But in this case, it'll be, be the referee in most cases at center ice. So when we're, as liners in, in the three official system, when we're lining up for a center ice face-off, those five seconds when the visitors are changing, we're creating presence between those benches or we're creating presence near the face-off circle at center ice. Five seconds for the home team, continuing to do the same thing. And then in that five seconds for puck drop, that's when we would move back and get ready for the, the puck to be dropped by going back to our blue line. So that's kind of, that's the procedure, understanding how it is that we move on the ice, stop play, separate players, start play again. So we can get that, that puck dropped. So that puck gets dropped and it's one over towards the Z team side of the ice and Z carries it up the ice. Now we know from positioning that everyone's getting set up here properly. The referee's following the play up the ice. Now we imagine that X has fouled Z. Referee blows their whistle. So the referee sees X to foul Z. Referee will blow their whistle. Tweet. The liners move in, they get these two separated. Now L2 was the end zone liner, L1 was the back liner. Now between them, they're gonna decide who it is that's going to uh, take the players to the box, but we see the same thing. The referee is stop play. We're gonna separate these players now. One of us, usually the one that ends the, owns the zone, is going L2 in this case, is gonna take the guilty player to the box. And then we have to set up for the next face off. Stop play, separate players, set up for the next face-off. That's with the added part that you have to escort the guilty player to the box. All right, so we need to set up for the next face-off. So the referee is gonna go report the penalty. L2 has taken the guilty player to the box. L1 has retrieved the puck and is now at the next face-off spot. L1 is going to go over to the benches, create presence over here while the players are changing. And then L1 is watching the referee for their hand to go down in order to blow their whistle to drop the puck. So we're now all set up for that next face-off. But it's the same, that same idea, stop players, separate players, stop play, separate players, and then set up for the next face-off. L2, of course, can bump over here now, line up at the dot for this puck to get dropped. Now, it doesn't matter where it is that the penalty procedure happens on the ice, okay? It's going to look similar for you no matter where it happens. So someone's going to have to stop play. The referee is going to use their voice. They're going to report the penalty. The lines people use their voice. They use their physical positioning. And they're going to escort the guilty player to the box. And then the referee is going to do line change. The lines people are going to set up the next face off and supervise the players at the benches. Right? It's a very similar process no matter where it is on the ice. So here are some different examples. Okay, Let's imagine the circle is where a penalty has occurred. This purple circle penalties occurred over here. 
but both lines people just come into this circle and make sure the players separate. Penalty occurs here at the orange, the referee is in the corner here, right? This, these two lines people are just gonna come in from the, from, the, from the blue line and they're gonna get in here and separate the players. If the penalty happens up here at green, here's this position of the referee, right? Lines people are just going to come in from where they were, they're gonna get between the players. Center ice, this is where the penalty occurred. Blue, the, the referee's kind of over here at the, at the dot following the play up the ice. Once again though, the lines people are just getting in between the players and separating them, using their physical presence, their voice, in order to help the players exit and then take the guilty player to the penalty box. So it's always the same type of idea for penalties. Lines people come in, separate the players. Even if there's nothing going on, the lines people still come into that area and create presence. Another situation or another circumstance that comes up during your game is going to be icing the puck and understanding what your procedure is for icing the puck. Again, it's all about stop play, separate players, start play. Forget the puck, you'll get the puck later. You're always going to deal with the, that separating players before you really do anything else. So here's an icing. We can imagine that this team has now killed off this penalty, okay, because this is the team that had a, was, had a penalty kill. They're exhausted, so they've, they're now icing the puck. Now, when we do an ice in the puck situation, the back liner, L2, is going to raise their hand and say, ice! Okay. L1 is going to head down the ice, taking a diagonal over to that side. They'll blow their whistle. L1, L2's hand is up. L1 will blow their whistle, tweet, and they'll point back up the ice to signal where the next face-off's going to be. Now, in this circumstance, there's three situations for ice in the puck. In this circumstance, there's no pushing and shoving. There's nothing going on because the team that was killing the penalty is exhausted and they've headed back to their bench. Now, in this circumstance, L2 doesn't have to come all the way into the zone. They'll curl down here, create presence right here. The players start to head for their line change, which allows L2 to bounce back up here to the benches because your procedure is to separate players. Nothing's going on. So L2 needs to separate players back at the bench. L1 can grab the puck and bring it back here for the next face-off. Referee will do line change procedure and then head down here and uh, set up for the next face-off. L2, with the players all changed, will head back to the dot and we're set up. Here's the next situation. This is where there's something happening behind the play. Same type of idea. Backliner is going to signal that there's an icing. L1 is going to stop play. At this point, there's stuff happening right here though. So L2 doesn't come down into the zone here. L2 is going to curl back and deal with whatever is going on here. The referee has curled around in order to make sure that they're able to talk to these players and get them to separate. L1 might get the puck and bring it back down, or maybe L1 forgets the puck because this isn't separating, and within a second, L1, she just comes back down here and gets involved as well. But that's the second situation. There's stuff happening behind the play, and again, you're going to forget about what's going on with the puck and deal with separating those players. Once that's done, then you can start setting up and uh, getting ready for the next face-off drop. Here's the third situation. It's happening where the icing's called, so again, the puck gets dumped down the ice, L2 realizes that there's stuff happening right here, so L2 comes all the way into the zone and L1 and L2 work together to separate the players. Referees come down here to create presence, talk to the players. But the real difference is where are you focusing your efforts at? It's to separate those players. And the first thing you deal with is where the players stop. The second thing you deal with is the line change procedure or the line change area. And the third thing, uh, almost 2B, uh, 2B, you have 2A, where the players are changing, and then 2B, where they're lining up for the next face-off. And you work together to manage those different, those different spots. So, we know so far icing, penalties. When we talk about these things, we really do realize that we have to stop play, separate players, start play. Again, I'm going to stress this. When you are separating players, forget the puck. Just the puck will wait for you. You don't have to rush to get the puck. Go separate the players. When the players are separated, that's when you go and deal with the face-off or with creating presence at the bench. So we continue our game. We got the icing. Icing gets called and it's brought back down here for the next face-off. Everyone's lined up. L2's lined up at the dot. Uh, L1 is lined up at the face-off face -off dot. And where the face-off's happening and the referee's lined up at the bottom of the circle at half piston. So with your face-off procedure, it's not just about standing there twiddling your thumbs. So when you're doing a face-off, there's always something to do. 
when you're standing at the benches creating presence, there's always something to do. And usually it's about talking to the players to, or using your nonverbal communication to tell the arena that you're not gonna be dropping the puck yet. And then telling them with your nonverbal, it's time to drop the puck along with your voice. So what you're gonna do is while line change is going on, you're gonna be open to the dot facing center ice. Okay, so this doesn't mean that you face the dot the entire stoppage. It means your shoulders and your skates are facing center ice. This allows you to see the players beside you. It allows you to see both benches. It allows you to see the, the players near the slot. It allows you to see everything going on in most of the ice surface. It also tells the whole arena you're not going to drop the puck. Because you don't drop the puck like this, right? You drop the puck like this. So if we're not facing the dot, everyone knows that you're not going to drop the puck. You're setting the players around you. The referee is now going to finish their line change procedure. So referee's hand is up like this, they drop it. You as the person dropping the puck, L1 in this case, sees their hand goes down, you drop your, you blow your whistle immediately, right? You check the players behind you one more time, then you pivot to face the dot and you get that puck down uh, as long, you get that puck down as long as everyone's lined up legally. Now, you've been dealing with lining up legally the entire stoppage. So you should already know that players are lined up legally. You don't wait for your whistle to go to line up the players. During the stoppage, you're going, guys, check your sticks, please. Your side of the hash marks. That's what you're doing. You're talking to the players. You're getting everyone lined up. Because then you know that if they're not lined up properly, that uh, you gave them that information. So the puck gets shot on goal, right? It gets played back to the defense. They are trying to figure out where to go with the puck. You get back to your blue line, L2 adjust their positioning, puck gets shot on net, referee finishes at the net, blows their whistle, because the goalie's covered the puck, and you and your partner come in and get between the players and get them to separate before they head over to change. That's what's happened, right? You've separated the players, everyone goes to change, referee comes to the top of the circle to do the line change procedure, and this is when one of you will get the puck, L1 grab the puck, and L2 went to the benches to create presence at the benches while players we're changing, right? That's the, that's the procedure that we follow for when the goalie covers the puck, right? This is the important part right here. Come in, separate those players before you move on. Don't rush this, get the players separated. And then we're gonna get set up for the next face-off. And we're back to this point again. It's just one big cycle. Stop play, separate players, start play. Play, stop play, separate players, start play, play. Now there's all sorts of other stoppages. So I've talked about goals and icings and penalties, but we have all sorts of other stoppages as well. There's a list of them, injuries, fights, et cetera, et cetera. Right? We're always gonna use that same procedure every stoppage and then just tweak it for what needs to be dealt with. When you're trying to decide what to do during a stoppage, you ask, you think about these, these things. So you wanna to get to where the players are. You hear the whistle go, you stop play. You don't just stand there watching or hanging out or having a coffee. You're gonna get physically between the players, right? That doesn't mean grab players. It means you just get, create physical presence so that they know you're there with your voice, with your body position, right? Use your voice, maybe use your whistle a second time because players aren't listening to you. Do not, do not, do not grab players unless someone else's safety is in jeopardy. Grabbing players is a very exceptional event, and it's only done to protect one player from another player. Otherwise, physical position and your voice or your whistle are your tools to create presence and get between the players wherever they're at. So something else that's gonna come up in your games is a penalty shot, so we can imagine what happens with a penalty shot. Uh, so we're gonna get everything set up here. Zed's gonna take a penalty shot on an X, okay? On the X goaltender, everyone's retreated to their benches. The first thing you want to figure out with the penalty shot is where is the shooter's stick? So the shooter's stick in this case is on his left side of the body. So the referee is going to line up on the same side of the ice as the shooter. One liner will line up on the other side of the ice mirror to the referee. And the third liner is going to, or the second liner, the third official, is going to line up near the benches. Always, 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 L2 takes the benches, bench side, even if the referee and the liner switch sides because the player is shooting the other way. You're always at the benches because if this is a goal, you want to make sure that you hold the celebrating team back. Uh, and in order to do that, you have to be at the benches. So that back liner who's not at the net is always on the bench side of the ice. All right, so the shot comes in. 
there's a couple different things going on here. So that liner is the second set of eyes during the shot. That liner is going to help manage the players after the shot, the goalie and the shooter. L2 is going to be visible to those benches. They're ready to deal with a flyby. So L2 will bounce up here. Z will curl around. Maybe and make sure, and L2 will make sure that Z stays away from the other team's team's bench. So those are the responsibilities. So what happens if a goal is scored? You just go to goal procedure. The referee points it, and then L, the other the liner who's also on the goal line is going to take up a position to make sure that the goalie and the player stay separate, and then uh, stay with the shooter. And the uh, the two liners can work together to make sure the shooter stays away from the from the other team's bench, or maybe the liner at the bench has it under control, in which case the liner that was at the net can retrieve the puck and head to center ice. What if there's no goal? You just go to your goalie cover the puck procedure, right? Keep the players separate, keep the players separate, proceed to line change procedure, and get the players lined up for their next face-off. Something else that comes up, although certainly we've uh, had a period of time here in a lot of districts where there is no handshake line because there was one of the things that was uh, paused due to the COVID-19 pandemic. But uh, handshake lines are a weird period of time because the teams are interacting with each other and getting really, really close to each other, right? Uh, and not because of COVID, but because they're close to each other and you don't know what kind of emotions might boil over in the handshake line. So what you're going to do in handshake line is your procedure, again, is to... You know, play stop, there's no play going on, but you need to keep the players as separate as possible. So the liners are going to line up diagonal from each other near the middle of the line. The referee will line up a little bit further away. Liners deal with the specific details. Referee deals with the big picture. That's why the liners are closer. Now, during this time, the liners are going to be communicating with the players, telling them which way to go. They might say, X head off the ice, Z go back to your bench, or they might, so they might do the opposite. But they're going to direct players on where to go to make sure they stay as separate as possible when they finish that handshake line. In this case, they're telling Z to go head back to their bench and X to go off the ice, which means L1 is able to escort X off the ice, and L2 will stay over here with Z and make sure that they're behaving themselves until it is time to take them off the ice, at which point the referee can follow at a distance behind and everyone is able to leave the ice, just like that. Main part of handshake line is tell the players where to go to keep them separate from each other. And then, in a very controlled way, have them exit the ice separate as separate teams. So, in this video, we have certainly talked about a variety of different uh, procedures for liners. Always stop play, separate the players, and then you get ready to start play again. And that is your procedure for every stoppage of play.